Today we're going to be going over section 6.2 titled Property of Parallelograms. And our objectives for today are to use some properties of parallelograms. Let's define what a parallelogram is. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So in this image right here, we see that QR is parallel to PS and that QP is parallel to RS. A few theorems we want to know about parallelograms. The first one has to do with the sides. So if we have a, qu if we have a quadrilateral and it is a parallelogram, then we know its opposite sides are congruent. So here we have QR is congruent to PS and QP is uh, congruent to RS. Theorem 6.3 talks about angles. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent and opposite angles are congruent as well. Theorem 6.4 states that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So we know that the measure of P and the measure of Q have to be 180. The measure of P and the measure of S need to be 180. The measure of S and R need to be 180. So consecutive just means the one that are there next to. So opposite angles are not supplementary. So Q and S are not supplementary, and P and R are not supplementary. Theorem 6.5 states that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other, meaning that this would be congruent to this, and MP is congruent to MR. Now let's look at parallelogram ABCD. Let's find the lengths and the angle measures using the theorems we just discussed. So to find the measure of AD, we know if this is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides need to be congruent. For EC, we know that if it's a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. So if AE is 5, then EC is 5 as well. For the measure of angle ADC, we know that opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So 65 plus 45 give us 110 degrees. Therefore, the measure of ADC needs to be 110 degrees. Now let me just erase some of this here. Now let's look at the measure of angle BCD. So BCD is this angle here. Now we know this angle is 110 and we know that consecutive angles need to be supplementary. So if this is 110 that means A needs to be 70. If A is 70 then this angle is 70 as well. Okay, some more practice problems to do. Uh, for this parallelogram right here, let's find E, F, and D. So if this angle is 82, we know that opposite angles need to be congruent. So I know that F is 82 as well. Now I also know that consecutive angles need to add up to be 180. So for this, I would do 180 minus 82, and I would get D equals 98. Once again, we know opposite angles need to be congruent, so E would equal 98. So in this one, we have to find I, G, H, and J. Well, J is straightforward. If this is a parallelogram, we know that that needs to be 14. If this is a parallelogram, we know I needs to be 16. And we know that these are being bisected. So G would be 12 and H would be 9. Now let's use some algebra to solve for X and Y. And today we're just going to work on A. So we know that opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent. So we know 4 has to equal 2x minus 6. If we add 6 to both sides, we get 10 equals 2x, and x equals 5. And if we're going to solve for y, we know the opposite sides are congruent. So 2y equals 8, y equals 4. Okay, so we're going to do one proof 
in this video and then we'll do the next proof together. So once again, let's start with our statements and reasons column. And then let's look at what we want to do. So we're given that A, B, C, D, and A, E, F, G, R parallelograms. Now, once we're doing these in proofs, you guys can start drawing them this way. And that's given to us. Now, we want to prove is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Well, we know that angle 2 needs to be congruent to angle 1. And angle 2 is also congruent to angle 3. The reason we know this is because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Now there's no abbreviation to that, you just have to write that phrase out for that reason. So if 1 is congruent to 2 and 2 is congruent to 3, then we can conclude that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because of the transitive property of congruence. Let's start abbreviating that as POC, property of congruence. Okay, and that's the proof. So I would like you to copy this one down into your notes and then we will continue with this one together in class. And that'll be the end of today's lesson. Thank you.